Hello everyone. My name is Susanna Stanska and it's such an honor and pleasure to be here in this virtual environment. Uh, but before we start, uh, you don't see that, but my cat is sitting behind my back. Here, this fluffy ball. So if he will do anything or if anything will happen, it's because of him. Uh, it won't be my fault, so I'm sorry in advance. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Daily Art, and in my presentation I will tell you the story of how this uh, like pretty small educational startup became a regular business. Uh, but first I need to tell you what is Daily Art. Daily Art for years was only a mobile app available for iOS and Android. Uh, you can download it for free on your smartphones and tablets. It presents one piece of fine art with a short story. Simple as that. It also has some additional features like the archive, search, favorites, uh, but they are fully available in the premium version of the app, which costs around six euros now. If you don't want to buy it, you still the access to all the daily features. You just need to swipe left and see all the ugly ads that are there. Um, I founded it uh, in 2012 and now the app is available in 18 languages and reaches around 800,000 people. Uh, a month. The main ingredient of the daily arts is the content. We use public domain arts mostly because of obvious financial reasons, uh, but sometimes we get the permissions for contemporary art and we feature it as well. Uh, the texts are written by us or by the guest authors or we get them from our partners, museums, galleries, libraries, private collections, archives, actually anyone who has uh, any content we can share, uh, which can be interesting for our users, of course. So how we do it? Our main goal is to make our users happy. So we contact the museums or they contact as well, contact us as well. Uh, and we offer them uh, to promote their collections or temporary exhibitions in the app, sometimes also in the magazine uh, or as well in the social media, um, our social media. Uh, we credit uh, the institution everywhere, we tag them, we mention them, we link them, um, we share um, their collections uh, not only in the app but also in our social media accounts, um, which is kind of a huge thing for us as well. Um, we also do the translations uh, of the texts uh, for the pieces we feature and we do all that for free. We only need to get from the institution the image uh, in a proper resolution and the text of the description in English. So, uh, so far we have been working with dozens of institutions from all parts of the world. Um, I can mention here like Van Gogh Museum, Consistorius Museum, Europeana, the Louvre, Rijks Museum. Uh, when it comes to Denmark, we have been working with Staten Museum for Kunst, sorry for my pronunciation, uh, and Skagen's museum as well. And as you can see here on the screenshot, um, that is a piece from uh, our monthly partnership with SMK, where for a month, every Sunday, we were presenting a masterpiece from their collection. And we say that, as you can see here, in the first very f first sentence of the description. So this is the core of everything. Uh, but you probably would like to know how it all started. Um, so here you can see the first and the ugliest version of the app from 2012. Uh, it was very simple, very gray, very cheap, very ugly. I've mentioned that, that it was ugly. Uh, I, can't, I can't look at it right now, actually. Um, so in this 2012, I had this idea to create, a, create an app which would teach art history in a simple and pleasant way. I thought that art history is perceived by many to be too complicated or too encyclopedic or too boring, um, especially among those who didn't study art history um, in schools, for example. I'm based in Poland um, and I had art history in school because it was a private school, but in public schooling art history is actually absent. So I wanted to change that whole story. Um, and mobile apps seem to be perfect for such a goal. So I invested, I invested all the money I had then. 
I was creating mobile apps for museums at the time. So I put all my earnings uh, for my first pro project uh, into this. I thought that the app won't ever earn any money. Uh, so there wasn't any business model behind it until uh, 2014. You know, I, th I thought that why would anyone would like to pay for art history? Uh, but the app seemed to be interesting for some and some huge media outlets featured it and wrote articles about it. That gave us the initial users who love the app. Um, they sent us emails, they wrote reviews, um, they contacted us through social media and it still works like this. It hasn't changed. Um, and as you can see on Google Play and App Store, we have marvelous reviews, thousands of them, actually. Uh, right now we are having around five stars in each of these store of rating, which is amazing, amazing thing. So these were the humble years of 2012 and 2018. Uh, we were barely earning any money uh, in that years. Uh, as I've mentioned in 2014, I've introduced um, the in -app purchase in the app, but it hardly covered the costs. So not to mention any investments or growing process, nothing. But everything changed in December 2018 um, when we have introduced the translations. So as I've mentioned before, right now we have 18 languages in the app. And in 2018, when uh, we have introduced the first five new languages, um, we knew there won't be a way back. Uh, it became an avalanche. Uh, we are available in some huge languages right now, like Chinese, Arabic, Hindi, Spanish, Portuguese. So masses of people speak these languages. Um, and thanks to them, everything grew like crazy. <laughs> you know, before that, I thought that... Um, you know, English is lingua franca, everyone speaks English, uh, so why to bother with some other languages? But uh, I haven't realized that uh, most of the people would love to read about art history, but not necessarily in a foreign language, which would be English for them. So uh, some massive doors opened for us with the introduction of new languages. So here you see uh, the data of our user groups before uh, 2018 and 2020. As you can see, before 2018, most of our users came from USA. It was around 20%. And developed countries like Germany, UK, France. Uh, now uh, we have only 12% of uh, the users from the US. And around the same number comes from China. Uh, which is even more interesting uh, because we don't have the access of the for uh, we don't have the access to the Chinese Android market because we don't have the Chinese license and Google services are blocked there. So all these people come uh, comes only from iOS uh, app. So every month around 50 60 percent of our downloads on iOS comes from China. Um, it's an amazing market. And it, op it was open for us uh, thanks to introduc introducing the Chinese um, language in the app in both versions, simplified and traditional one. Uh, so right now we have much more diverse audience. Uh, without the translations, we wouldn't reach the countries such as Brazil, Turkey, Russia. Um, it was a very good move <laughs> for us. Um, because what's the most important, the number of our users and downloads grew like hell. So on iOS, as you can see, uh, we have 500% uh, downloads more and on Android, like on average, 200% uh, downloads more. Thanks to the translations, we, were also, we are also often featured by the stores, App Store and Google Play, which gives us not only the eternal fame, but as well, we are more and more visible in the stores. Uh, so if you write art in the App Store or Google Play, uh, search, it's highly probable that we will be there on the first, second or third position. So this is how everything looks like now. Um, thanks to that growth, we are able to invest in new products. Now, in Daily Arts family, we have the app, we have the Daily Art magazine, which is an online magazine with 
regular articles about art. It's much wider than Daily Art app. Uh, we have Daily Art Shop, where we sell physical paper goods of Daily Art, such as calendars or notebooks. Uh, we have also daily, daily Art Courses, with online art history courses, written ones, not recorded ones. Um, I have put on the slide also our social media channels, because they are very important um, for us to reach people who are not and wouldn't be ever in the app or in the magazine because they're interested in something completely different, in a completely different content. Um, thanks to that growth, we also grew uh, as a company. On a daily basis, uh, we have six members um, of the core team, and we are all women there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we are also having more than 60 writers who write for Daily Art magazine, 60 writers and proofreaders, uh, and more than 300 volunteers who help us to translate and proof the app in these 18 languages. So before 2018, we were mostly bootstrapping and crowdfunding a little, uh, but after this year, we are fully profitable and we are doing fine without any external funding and we can invest in new stuff and grow more. So this presentation was about the business. So I also need to tell you a bit more about it <laughs> itself. It's very simple um, in terms of earning money. Uh, in Daily Art app, as I've mentioned, we have an in-app purchase, oh, which costs around six euros. Uh, which gives you the eternal access to the app without any limits. We also display ads and we earn money from that uh, if you don't have the premium version. We uh, also get some donations, which is super cool for us because it means that people care about us. In Daily Art Magazine, we display ads. Uh, in Daily Art Courses, we sell courses for money, of course, but we also have some basic free courses as well. Uh, and in the daily art shop, we just sell physical products. That's the simplest thing. And yeah, I forgot to mention that right now with our whole uh, daily art family, with all of our channels and products, we reach around 1 million people a month uh, in that 18 languages or only in English, uh, around million people uh, in a month reads stuff about art history. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> so as this presentation was supposed to be about business, I wanted to end with the money slide and with that million number slide. So thank you so much for listening. Here are my Twitter account and my email address. If you would like to get in touch, ask about anything, discuss anything, I don't know, here are the details uh, and the contact. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm happy that my cat was pretty calm. Thank you.